Chuck, so nice to meet you. Robert has told me so much about you. I hope we were, and I'm hoping we can do the same for you. Robert says you're moving here from another part of the country. Have you had an opportunity yet to check the Washington area out much for houses? Oh, okay. Well, where is your work located? All right, and will you be using the metro as a regular form of transportation? Okay, does your company provide parking arrangements for you? All right. Have you had an opportunity to look in the district, or are you really narrowed down to living in Maryland? Not in the city. How about Virginia? Have you considered Virginia? Yeah, he's right. Um, if you are driving a lot, then I would suggest living in Maryland because there's so many more routes getting into district from Maryland. Now, so for right now, let's just eliminate Virginia. Okay, that's your first choice. So, as far as here, I think I need to get some personal information. Uh, first of all, how many people will be living with you in this home? Okay, that's just yourself then. You have a dog? Is it a large dog? What kind of dog is it? Okay, that goes together, I guess. Well, um, now as far as your living accommodations prior to this, have you lived in an apartment, condominium, a townhouse? What did you live in before you came here? Okay, so you want something you can move into and enjoy right away. Okay, now what type of hobbies do you have? Do you have any special needs, say, for extra space? Maybe you're a photographer, you need some developing, a developing room or something like that? Okay, now is that something you could do in a basement?
Well, now I have seen some properties where they have walkout basements. Now there you have sliding glass doors, a couple windows. Would that be suitable? Okay. Well, I need to move on to some personal questions regarding financing. Lenders around here want to know everything about you. So, first of all, what type of monthly payment do you think you're going to feel comfortable paying? Okay, now I'm assuming that's going to include your principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. Now, beyond that, you might have something, if you move into a townhouse, you might have something what they call an HOA. Okay, now, um, did I tell you about the HOA? That's the Homeowners Association. As I was saying, it's the homeowner's association fee. It's a charge by the owners of the townhouse to maintain the community property, swimming pools, parking lots, that kind of thing. Mm, as far as I'm aware, it's not more than about $35, $50 a month, say. Now, the properties that I'm aware of, they do increase maybe a dollar or two a year, but then again, not every year either. Okay. I think it's a good idea to become active in the association. That way you get an opportunity to meet your neighbors, have a say in what the community looks like. As far as I'm aware, some of them do have restrictions. In fact, in Montgomery County, I think they have more than in others, particularly Montgomery Village. Yeah, that's right. They like to know that people aren't going to paint their houses strange colors or leave campers parked out in front of the lawn. They like to know that the neighborhood's going to look a particular way. Yes, they are, because they're involved in making the rules. It really does make the properties look like nice. Um, is this something you might want? Okay, great. Now, I need to ask you some more financial questions. First, what is your gross annual income? Okay, I see. Now, have you been with this agency for some time now? Is this a new field for you, a new, a new career field? Hmm. And how many years have you been with them? Nine years, that's great. Lenders really like to see longevity in your employment. Now, as far as the overtime, is this something you're going to continue to do once you move out here?
Okay, and that is something your boss can verify. Now, this is something your boss can verify for you, the overtime. Okay, great. Well, that's a really good income. I don't think we're going to have any problems finding you a suitable property. Now, in terms of long-term debt, do you have any personal loans, car payments, anything outstanding that I need to know about? Okay. Now, do you have any car loans on top of that? Or do you, ha you own your car outright, or do you have a car loan? Okay, now... Okay. Now, if we were to find you a property in the next two or three weeks, do you think you could pay the car loan off? Okay, that's great. Uh, well, we need to look at a few more things now. What is the time frame for purchasing a home? If we find something in, a, in the next couple weeks, are you ready to put, put down an offer? Mm-hmm, that's right. Well, there's really two ways we can go here. One is to go with a conventional loan, and that'll take about three to four weeks to process. The other is if we go with a government loan. Now, that's an FHA or a VA. That takes a little bit longer, more like 45 to 60 days. That's right, after we find it. Now, besides the car payment, you mentioned a credit card debt. Can you tell me about that? Oh, how much is the balance on that one? Okay, well, unfortunately, they are going to count that as a debt against you and qualifying you for a loan. Well, that would probably help, um, but again, we need to look at the whole picture. Now, how much do you think you can pay in terms of an initial down payment? How much did you want to invest? Okay, now, let me go in and give you a brief idea of what the costs are involved in purchasing a home in Montgomery County. Now, it happens to be about the same if you go and purchase in Virginia or D.C., and this is really a lot of information, so I will go slow so that we get all the figures down. When we're done meeting, I could give you the figures. I can just print it out on my computer and let you take it with you. But generally speaking, your total costs will come to about 7% of your total purchase price. Now, that includes 1%, which is a transfer tax, and that goes to the county, okay, and a half a percent, which goes to the state of Maryland, and that pays for all your free parkland and everything that surrounds it. It basically maintains it. 
then there's four dollars and forty cents per thousand which is charged as an additional transfer tax they call it state stamps Okay, so really, we're talking about all three of these items coming up to 2% of your purchase price. Now, there's also going to be an appraisal fee. That's $125, a credit check. Now, this is a lot of information. Do, do you have any questions? A lot of people ask about that. Now, the appraisal fee is charged by the lender. Say, for instance, you're, he's going to loan you 80% or even 90% of the value of the home. They want to make sure that their investment is protected in case of default. So they send an appraiser out. They take a look at the property. They compare it to other homes in the community to make sure that you're getting a fair price for your home. Okay, now the appraisal fee comes to 125 or 150 thereabouts. Now there will be a credit check, that's $25. And also I need to mention here that there's something called the loan origination fee. Now with that, they charge you 1% of the amount of the loan. So say for instance the lender loans you $100,000, they're going to ask for $1,000 up front. Well, it's, it's really just interest. Now, there's also something called loan discount points. You're right. In most cases, you can negotiate it. Now, in a tight market like we have today, they're going to charge you more points because they want to have more interest up front. Um, they don't really care who pays this. It can be either the buyer or the seller. That's right. Now, you can request that the seller sh at least share them with you, but if you're going to make a low offer, then I'd suggest you pay all the points. Now, since you're transferring, your company might be interested in helping you out with the closing costs. I would check because most companies do pay at least some of the closing costs and I would let them know that it is customary in the case of a transfer that they help you out. Not all companies, and the thing is they are very high. Now, one of the reasons that they're so high is that you're paying a year's taxes plus a minimum of two months property taxes up front. Now, this is something you're going to recoup when you sell it. Well, this, okay, the account, this is going to go in an escrow account. The lender puts it in escrow so that when the tax bill comes due, they have the money to pay it. Now, let me summarize once again. When you're purchasing the home, the total purchase price, I'm going to give you 7%, and that's the highest it's going to be. Now, that 7% is going to include the loan discount points and the loan origination fee. Now, if I can get you a property for just the loan origination fee, then we're already doing good. We're saving you a point.
Okay. Well, we save you a point by negotiating. Now, like I said, the 7% is on the high side, and that really is a conservative figure, and I like to do it that way because in, I'd rather have that your expenses are a little bit less than a little bit more. Oh, you mean you're referring to the, um, back to the, uh, sep the loan origination? Yes, you can negotiate that. Um, and I think we won't have any problem doing that. Now, like I said, the 7% is really coming in on the high side. Now, I would rather that you, your expenses end up being a little bit less than a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, if it goes the other way, you're just going to be disappointed. Now, do be sure and check with your company about the closing costs. Um, as I said, they might have a policy that you're just not aware of. That's right. Most of them will either pick up the loan origination fee or an amount equal to that. Many of, many of them do pay the transfer taxes and the attorney's fees. Okay, now let's go back to the original question about how much of a cash investment you want to make. Can you talk about that? Okay, it does include your closing costs. Now, let me think. Let's see. If interest rates are at 9, and to be on the safe side, I better say 10.5%. Oh, did I tell you about assumable mortgages? A lot of people ask me about it, and it is possible to get them. However, it really does limit the number of properties that are available to you right now. I do check them daily for a number of investors, and like I said, it limits the number of amenities you can get. But I will keep my eyes open, and I'll do the best I can do. Okay, now, earlier you mentioned about a house that you sell. I think it was out on River Road. Now, was that near the school? I know the neighborhood. It is really beautiful. It's an old established neighborhood. It's very expensive. It, uh, I'd say anywhere between two hundred and three hundred thousand dollars a house. But I'll keep my eyes open for something like that. Okay, well that's really important and I'll, I'll really watch out for something like that. Now, let's get back to the financing. Let's say, um, I think we can get you between one hundred and forty and one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Now, when I'm talking about that, if you get the ninety percent loan, you have to pay ten percent down, and if you get an eighty percent loan, you're paying twenty percent down. But the ninety percent down loan, it's it's really a disadvantage.
it, it's a disadvantage because with the 10% down, you have what they call a private mortgage insurance. No, unfortunately, it hasn't been done away with altogether. Um, it's really there to protect the investor against default. Now, they want to make sure that they're going to get a fee until you've paid down the 20%. That's right. Now, after you've been in your home for a couple of years and the house appreciates, and you can request that the lender drop this fee. And usually, until you've, it used to be that until you've invested the 20%, they would charge this fee, but they really can't do that anymore. Well, like I just said, it, it used to be that until you'd pay the whole thing, um, until you'd paid up to the 20%, they were going to charge that fee, but it has gone to court. Now, let's go again here over the $150,000. Let's say you buy a house for $150,000. That's $15,000 down with the 90% loan and $10,000 in closing costs. That brings you nicely into that $25,000, $30,000 range. Closing costs are high, and I can give you some of those figures when you go home. But like I said, um, with this down payment, with the twenty-five to thirty thousand down, I think your needs are quite modest. Okay. Well, let me go over it one more time. If we find you a home for $150,000, then with a 90% loan, we're going to have to put $15,000 down and another $10,000 down in closing costs that brings you right into your $25,000, $30,000 initial investment. Right. That's the original cash investment that you had wanted to make. I think we're going to be able to find you lots of properties right in there. Okay. Now, are you going to be coming back here from L.A. next weekend? Okay, um, well, when is your start date for work? Oh, well, that makes a big difference. Now, since you're making a special trip out next weekend, I'll set both days aside, and I think maybe Saturday we'll just drive around some of the neighborhoods that I think you're going to like, and I'd like you to take notes during this so we get a clearer picture of what you want. And then Sunday we'll actually go into some of the homes in the neighborhoods that you like. Okay, now this could actually happen as soon as next weekend, and I have plenty of loan officers in this town who would be more than happy to, to accommodate you. All you need to bring with you is the loan application, and they'll process it right then and there.
Okay, great. I do have a list. It's a couple pages long. It spells out everything you're going to need in terms of financial data. And we'll just bring it with us to the loan office and they'll process it as quickly as possible. Okay, great. Um, what I'll do is I'll just, if you have a few minutes, I'll run it off on the computer when we're done. And I'm ha having, very glad to have met you, and I hope we're going to be able to help you out. Nice to meet you. Great. Thanks.